Hey YouTube and Reddit, uh, Senator32 here again with another coin talk and 4K video. Uh, this one's a little different. Uh, if you watch any of my other videos, you know that I'm primarily a US coin collector. Uh, but through uh, just being online in the coin community, both on Reddit and Discord, and uh, through watching here on YouTube videos from people like Numastacker, I really tried to expand my horizons into world coins. Uh, and over the past couple of years, I picked up a couple cool things. I try to keep my primary collection of keepers to about 30 coins, uh, which is what I'll show you here today. Uh, so, uh, starting out, one of the areas that I thought was the easiest to jump from U.S. was to Mexican and Spanish coins, because they were used uh, up until 1857 in the United States as currency. So this first coin is a 1745 Mexican real in a PCGS AU55, and it's just stunning it has beautiful greens and rainbow color uh it's the pillar design you see in those older coinage kind of classic design uh both sides just gorgeous gorgeous and we'll try to get in close here if the camera lets us um just really nice coin uh, overall it's uh, absolutely gorgeous i want to mention that all of these coins if you look up the cert numbers have images uh if you like any of them take a look at the images they'd really be a nice close-ups so moving right along, because this video is going to be long, because there's 30 coins, we got a uh, 1751 Mexican uh, 8 real in PCGS XF45. This is just a super honest, awesome XF coin. This is kind of what you want with old, old silver. You want this matte gray sort of look that uh, is just awesome. Note the edge here, too. It's important on old pillar uh, milled 8 reals that they have this sort of uh, edge. Uh, good way to note counterfeits. A lot of them have rims. You'll never see a rim in this sort of coin. But just look at the color. Uh, really nice, deep, kind of steel gray. It's wonderful. All right. Uh, next coin. Uh, you'll notice a little bit of a trend with a lot of Mexican coins to start with. Uh, this one's a fun one, though. 1772 portrait style 8 real AU55 PCGS. It's got a beautiful kind of bluish purple toning on both sides, especially on the reverse. The reverse is probably uncirculated. And it has beautiful proof-like qualities to it, where it's very reflective. Uh, it has kind of deep magenta in the centers. Uh, you can see the greenish there, if the camera focuses. Um, really nice coin. Good details, but, but some friction. That's why the AU grade. This reverse, though, is dreamy. And this is the, if you notice, the FM and, and MO are reversed of how they should be on a normal coin. That's why this is the inverted. It's a one-year type. It's actually collected in the series, but look at that color. Oh, man. Just a beautiful 8 real. Can't ever get myself to get rid of that one. But yeah, inverted MOFM. Really nice, really interesting. Next one uh, really is only saved because of the color. Uh, 1774 uh, 8 real. It's a nice coin. Uh, it might eventually uh, get kicked out of the set of 30. Uh, but if you look at the, uh, especially the pictures of this, beautiful arc rainbow on one side, which it's, it's hard to find 8 reals with really great, nice color. Usually it's only because these were saved early on by collectors, put into an album of some sort or an envelope, and developed some some nice toning around the edges. Um, no bag hoards or anything like you'd see in Morgan's, really. Uh, but yeah, good good strike on this one. Good detail, no real problems. Nice AU coin. All right, moving right along. Ah, this one uh, this one's neat too for other reasons. A different style of the portrait eight real from Mexico. Uh, cool rim on this one nice big dentals the interesting thing about it is that planchet defect right in the center it's actually a piece of the planchet that's missing um so i just i find it kind of interesting uh you don't see that every day all right i think we're out of the uh the old eight reals and into the cap and rays and this is just one of those beautiful cap and rays i've ever seen it's not the highest grade but man is it proof like fully fully deep proof like and it's just got luster for days, and it's got wonderful edge toning for being in an album uh, for many years. But you can just see the reflectivity. It's reflecting everything. It's reflecting my shirt there. I mean, it's just just a gorgeous, gorgeous 8 real uh, cap and rays. Um, I don't have many cap and rays, but uh, if I ever see them like this, I'll definitely pick them up because it's just gorgeous. And uh, this coin wasn't all that expensive. I uh, actually purchased it off of Reddit. Uh, wonderful, wonderful coin. Not not rare, but rare to see them this nice. Okay, moving right along. We're almost out of Mexico here. This one is the only one graded as such by either um, 
grading company. It's a 1901 over 801 dash CN uh, one gold peso. Um, and you can kind of see the overdate. I'll try to get in there close, but it has an 801 under the 901. Uh, I've looked, I think there are others that do exist, uh, but none that have been designated as such. And this already comes from a mintage of 2,350 coins. So the base mintage is very, very low. And uh, the, of course, overdates are subsets of that mintage, and there are other overdates. So I think this is fairly scarce, and it's just one that um, I just thought was so neat and kind of unique. I thought, ah, it's worth keeping. So, like I said, we're going to get out of Mexico after, uh, I believe, this coin. But, I mean, who can pass up a Cavalito Peso, MS-63, 1913. One of the most gorgeous designs, uh, especially in Mexican currency, uh, in coinage, in my opinion. This one has wonderful peripheral toning for being in an album. And just beautiful luster. Uh, I think it's very strong for the 63 grade, personally. But, uh, yeah, just beautiful, beautiful luster and uh, interesting color. Uh, really nice, kind of spotlights uh, the center of the coin. And again, wonderful design of uh, Liberty riding on uh, on a horse there with the rays in the background and the Mexican eagle on the reverse. Uh, just really stunning, stunning coin. Get the lighting here to adjust. All right, and again, I think we're leaving Mexico. Here we go, way away from Mexico. Uh, 1903, one yen from Japan. Uh, this is a gorgeous coin. Uh, it's it's just got wonderful luster. Again, I think it's really really PQ for the grade. Um, gem level luster. A couple marks, which I think are why they graded at 63. But uh, even got some wonderful kind of light purple blue toning uh, near the top. And uh, if you, again, if you look at the true view of it, yeah, you can see that. But really cool dragon design. Uh, I just liked it. Uh, what I found after I started expanding into other areas. Uh, was that I just kind of went for coins I thought had cool design. I tend to like the larger coinage, uh, the thalers and such. Uh, speaking of, here's a Saxony, um, Germany area, uh, 1629 thaler in XF45. And again, this one, the pictures online do it much better justice than the video. I couldn't seem to capture the light uh, and the colors properly on this, but incredibly busy design on the reverse but really intricate and fun to get under a loop and look at uh, a lot of history. Love the guy uh, there with the full armor and you got the sword and the, you know, very uh, fancy armor hat there on the, on the right. Again, beautiful color. I just love the design. Um, I found most of these coins raw, you know, in collections, a couple of them I purchased uh, over the year, uh, last couple of years and uh, been lucky to, to find them. Uh, this was an interesting holder. They've kind of, PCGS has a giant gasket around the outside. I'm not sure I like it very much, but eh, at least it fits in a, one, a single holder. Uh, this is a gorgeous coin. 1913 Germany, or Prussia, excuse me, uh, proof 63 DCAM 5 mark. And it's just, it's got beautiful reflective fields with this red purple center and this green blue field and kind of towards the outside. I see a lot of this green blue in. Uh, in five marks uh, as far as the toning goes on them. Uh, but you know what's crazy about this coin is that even though it has that wonderful toning, it maintains the decam frosted devices, uh, which are um, are nice. I will say probably, in my opinion, it should just be a cam, uh, but uh, I'm not gonna argue uh, with the uh, decam. I think the central devices just have enough frosting that that's what they gave it. A couple marks, but uh, let's see if we can get that color to pop. Actually, oh, there you go. Don't mind the light. You can kind of see all the different colors in the fields. Wonderful design always on the uh, on the five marks with the, the Prussian eagle there. It's wonderful. Fourth mark. All right. Moving on. Let's see what we got next. I don't have these in particularly any order. Uh, okay, 1789 uh, British. This is a beautiful coin. Again, if you can see the, the true view, look at it. MS-63 brown. But it has all these greenish purples and chocolatey brown colors uh, along with a wonderful original mint luster. In 1789, uh, Plymouth Devonshire token. Got George III there on the front. Original mint red kind of hiding away, tucked away in all the protected areas. Uh, it's really a sight to behold. I, it's, it's just mind-boggling that... Technically, I suppose this is a token. Uh, they lasted uh, in this sort of shape. Uh, it's just, this law is just incredible. 
So, um, moving right along, because I'm going to want to keep the video fairly, fairly short, uh, as short as it can be. Uh, Numisacker will like this one. It's an 1820 British sovereign. Uh, it's the first uh, type of the new modern sovereign with Strucky design in the back. And I just love that, uh, that ring around the outside of the St. George and the dragon. Uh, you know, I actually didn't uh, get any of the 2017 uh, anniversary editions, and I wish I had. Uh, but um, got one of the originals. Good luster. I think it's accurately graded at AU58. A little bit of rub, as you can see, that extends into the fields. But overall, all the details are pretty much there. The reverse on this one's very strong. Uh, good, maybe even uncirculated on the reverse. Good, uh, good cartwheel effect. And uh, really nice, you know, kind of semi-reflective surfaces. Um, all right, let's move on to the next coin. What do we got? Ah, the matched pair. I couldn't help myself. I found a wonderful 1820 British crown to go along with the Sovereign. And this thing, just again, AU58 as well, so it matches in the grade. This thing is just wonderful. It's got this incredible original surface color that just has all the colors of the rainbow just lightly around the whole coin. There you go. You can see all of them. It's slightly reflective surfaces. Uh, and it's just... It's wonderful. It's a great example of a coin that was never dipped or messed with or try or conserved improperly. Uh, just wonderful coin. And even though higher graded examples can be had, I, it all comes down to eye appeal in the end. And this this coin does it for me. All right. Next coin in the lot. Uh, can stick with the British stuff. Uh, 1862 uh, Large Penny uh, MS64 Brown. Uh, this is one of the most amazing. Uh, British large since I've ever seen, I guess British penny, excuse me. Um, really a semi-reflective nature to it. Very, uh, very interesting toning. You got the original mint red tucked away in all of the hidden areas. Uh, some dye polish in the front, but you got this purpley red toning on it that is just wonderful. Um, it pops. It makes you say, wow, when you pick up the coin. And these are particularly hard to find in really high grade. Because uh, they were used, you know, quite heavily, uh, so this is just a treat. I was—I uh, remember when I first found it raw; it uh, it made the jaw drop. So uh, it's definitely one that uh, I plan to keep as my example of a, you know, very pretty penny. But um, MS64 again. Take a look at the uh, images just by looking up the PCGS certs. Uh, let's see. Next coin. Uh, this coin is just just gorgeous. Uh, it's a half sovereign, 1887. MS-65. Uh, these coins, uh, you don't see an MS-65 very often or higher. And this one, you can tell why. Mainly uh, very clean. A couple of the traditional hairlines you see in a lot of British coins on the front, but very few of them. So it's not really that distracting. And uh, the luster just is monstrous. Completely cartwheels anytime you move the coin. And that's really what you want to see in any sort of gem coin. And um, yeah, I mean, it just... I, I thought about selling this coin a couple times. I couldn't get myself to because it's just it's just so darn pretty. Um, it's hard. It, you could get a better one, but it would be super expensive. So uh, I'm I'm happy with this one. All right, the next coin. Ah, uh, Ireland MS sixty three nineteen oh five half penny. Uh, gorgeous coin. Uh, again, super original kind of subdued luster but uh wonderful original mint red that's tucked away in every single protected area and around the edges wonderful harp design of the hibernia i uh, just it's again it, it kind of boggles the mind how especially copper could stay this nice uh this long and uh get george the third there on the front i mean it's just uh other than the toning it's just like how it was made um yeah what, what's what's more to say it's it's a wonderful coin uh, again, it's the only Irish coin I have at the moment. Again, I'm kind of trying to spread out because uh, just going with whatever I think looks interesting. Uh, I don't tend to collect a lot of copper. I find that the gold and the silver are a little more interesting. Uh, but every once in a while, a copper coin, as you're seeing, um, is just too cool. And, you know, they were really the used the coins that people use, so they have a lot of history with them. And, um, you know, as in numismatics, it's all about, about history. So, um, let's see. Yeah, this next coin's giving me trouble, and I'll show you why. It, it It's in a double-thick PCGS holder, or like a 1.5, which I didn't even know they made. 
Uh, in fact, I can't get it out. Let's. I'll. Uh, I think I'm just going to grab the one right behind it temporarily, and then I'll come back to it. So this one, gorgeous coin. Eight. Uh, it's an 1848 uh, French five franc essay. Now what that is, that's and I'm probably mispronouncing that, but um, it's essentially like a what in U.S. coinage we would call a pattern, uh, a trial issue that uh, they didn't actually run. Uh, but uh, they produced in proof in very small numbers uh, to test out, you know, and, and um, this is one of those such examples. And it's just gorgeous. has a lot of the eye polish, as you see from uh, uh, some of these up-close images, but wonderful design, uh, very reminiscent of, uh, you know, Morgan's designs in the in U.S., and uh, just absolutely gorgeous and wonderful proof fields, cameo devices. It's just too neat, you know, and, and too scarce to, to give up, and it's an old NGC fatty holder, uh, which uh, those of you in the know, uh, old uh, certain holders have premiums in the market, and NGC fatties are uh, certainly one of them. So let's see if I can get this other coin out that was giving me trouble. There we go. Uh, so this is this holder. Uh, it's a 1690 uh, Thaler from Hungary, VF30. Look at that, about 1.5 times thick. They usually had these in the oversized holders, and uh, I wasn't. I was kind of expecting that, and it came back in a regular one. Again, it's got a gasket that covers up some of the coin, but overall, I guess it fits in the box. Uh, it's got Leopold the Hogmouth. I'm sure, that's not what they called him to his face, but uh, yeah, there he is in all his glory. Uh, again, another beautiful tan, or uh, excuse me, dark gray sort of coin. Um, exactly what you want to see in in you know 300 year old silver is. Um, it's not bright and shiny like it was just minted yesterday. It looks like it has age to it. A really neat coin, really neat thaler. Again, the larger coins I'm finding uh, very interesting. Um, so moving right along, this coin, uh, this coin. I feel like blast white coins, this is your coin. 1920 Swiss franc and MS-68. I bought it out of a, a collection that was sold years ago on Heritage, and there was a specialized collection of, of uh, Swiss coins. And this coin is just outstanding. I mean, it's just luster for days, incredibly clean. One of the nicest francs you will ever see, especially an older one. Uh, PCGS actually took the image of this and actually featured it in their uh, Instagram feed for a day because it was just so pretty. Um, so check out the image for sure. But uh, you got to love that design. Hevetica just standing there with the shield. Um, just gorgeous. You can tell why they've stuck with it or stuck with that design for, for many, many years. It's just really neat. Wreath on the back, denomination in the center. Just look at those fields, though. They're just satiny. It's wonderful. It really is. Usually I like coins with, as you know, coins with color. But uh, when they come like that, you really can't argue too much. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you're liking the background. A whole bunch of interesting books and uh, magazines from auctions. Um, okay, so uh, 1641 uh, dollar or lion dollar from the Netherlands, um, XF45. Uh, these things were not made, uh, they, let's put it this way, these things were made very crudely. There's the lion on the back. Uh, they just actually made well, commemorative issues of this in silver uh, a couple years ago. Uh, so it's kind of in vogue, but this is an original one. Got with the shield there. It's just a cool old piece of large silver. Um, this one has wonderful color on the outsides. Uh, it gets hard to pick up on the camera, but um, it's. I know if you might collect U.S. coins like me, you might look at this and go, "How is this XF45?" Again, it's just a different. Uh, they were made, made very crudely. It was a different time, and uh, this was, you know, has a little over half uh, half wear on it uh, for when it was uh, originally minted. So, neat coin. Uh, here we go. This is, again, kind of an oddball, fairly recent edition. Uh, 1654 uh, half Patagon, or should be quarter Patagon. Uh, and it's just really interesting from Flanders, Spanish Netherlands sort of area. And uh, yeah, look at that. It has the wonderful Spanish cross, the date on either side. Uh, obviously a very crudely made coin, kind of wavy. Uh, and the, the crest on the back. Uh, it's just really cool. It just kind of it screams old Spanish colonial pirates and everything else. Like, it's just wonderful. Um, next coin, got some more gold. And you'll notice it's a details holder. Gasp. Well, this coin's amazing. 1728 ducat. I found it and graded it myself. Uh, it's it's the most well-struck up ducat I, from this period I've ever seen. I mean, it's just incredible. It'd be like an MS-65. 
but I didn't notice the side had a little bit of rim filing. Uh, it's hard to catch on the camera. You'll notice it's a little shiny there on the very edge. Someone has shaved off just a little bit of gold, probably back in the day. But uh, it does, sadly, to make it a details coin. But an absolutely stunningly beautiful one that, you know what? I'm going to keep in my collection, despite what the plastic says. All right. Next one. Uh, again, no particular order here. 1793 token, uh, half penny. XF45, interesting one. It's a British East India Company token. Uh, and um, here's the wonderful British East India um, logo in the back. And on the on the edge of the coin, you'll have, or you'll have to actually pause it to read it. But it basically says that this is redeemable at a specific grocer's shop. Um, wipe that off there. Uh, which is in a particular town in the UK. And so it's just incredible, uh, incredible history. Uh, it's interesting to see if those shops are still around. Uh, very, very neat. Um, but very, very neat. Again, we'll go look at the the high-resolution imagery, and you can read all of that, uh, the tea dealer there that's payable to that particular grocers. Very neat in Manchester. Like, so very cool. I just It's not even worth that much. It's just a neat piece of history. Uh, here's another piece. Again, a copper. Not, not normal on these last two, but look at this. I don't really particularly like farthings. This thing just has luster for days, and both sides have a greenish red brown toning. And it's MS64, 1826 farthing. Um, just gorgeous. You got uh, George IV there uh, under all that luster, and you can see that cool green red toning that's just uh, on both sides. The back is mostly green uh, with Britannia sitting there, but uh, it's just such a pretty coin. I can't get myself to, uh, to sell it. Uh, Get another one. I highly recommend taking a look at the images. All right, moving right along. We're getting near the end here. I got a couple more. Um, this NGC coin, fairly new uh, addition uh, to my uh, collection. 1813 Brazil, 4,000 Reese, MS63 with a gold wings sticker. Uh, wings is like CAC for, uh, for world coins, uh, and they think it's a PQ64, basically, or a better coin. Uh, you can see this coin is just beautiful, wonderful luster. Sadly, sitting crooked in the NGC holder. That's why I'm treating it a little gingerly. Beautiful, beautiful PL surfaces too. Uh, very reflective when you bring it down, uh, but uh, otherwise uh, just really clean and just such a cool design. Uh, the Spanish cross on the back and the shield on the front. Um, just very, very neat. 1813, a lot of history there. I mean, imagine if it was a U.S. coin, it'd be, it'd be so valuable. <laughs> But uh, as it is, pretty nice big piece of gold. Uh, something you don't see every day, especially in this level of quality. All right. Next, again, sticking with Brazil, 1815 Brazil, 960 Reese, MS62. Uh, this one it has I loved mainly because the color and original kind of surface uh, surfaces it has. But other than that, uh, I think the only thing that really holds it back is a subdued luster. Uh, the coin is incredibly well struck, uh, especially for the type, which are generally overstruck on eight reals. So you see a lot of that pop through and affect the design. And this one's just absolutely immaculately struck up for the type. Uh, so the fact it's a little subdued on luster, I can deal with. Very neat. And again, not all that expensive. Uh, this one, uh, a 960 Reese also, XF40 from Brazil. But this one's particularly interesting. It is struck over a Mexican eight real. And I call this the smile uh, 960 Reese, and uh, you can see why. It was struck over like an 1813 to 1816 Mexican 8 real, or Spanish 8 real, and you can see Ferdinand's face there underneath, smiling in the middle of the coin. You can see a little bit of the pillars in the back as well, uh, but really neat. I love overstruck coins and the history uh, that goes back, so you know it's like three coins or two coins in one in that case. Uh, really, really cool. Oh, man, one of everybody's favorite designs, 1829, uh, the Central American Republic, it real, with the smiling sun behind the mountain sitting out rays and the tree on the back. Uh, another great example of just a really wholesome original XF coin with beautiful steel gray surfaces and great strike. Uh, this one is an NGC holder. It probably needs to be reholdered because it's all scratched up, but really cool. And uh, one of the better designs in the... Uh, in some of the South American series, and these do command quite a premium as well.
Oh, here we go. Uh, this is a uh, 1830 Real from the Central American Republic. And uh, it's, again, same design as the other uh, with the Smiling Sun, but this one just has beautiful rainbow toning all over it and is quite nice. So, um, yeah, uh, beautiful coin. Check out the images. Uh, and I'm glad you guys uh, tagged along to the very end of this 30 coin showcase video. And if you have any questions, make sure to join us on reddit.com slash rcoins and on the uh, coin discord.